So in the last short section of this lecture, I'm going to try to round out your tool set of basic plotting functions um, by showing you how to draw a, uh, just a bar graph. Okay? So this is the kind of thing that you've probably done a lot um, by using other tools. Um, you can do exactly the same thing in MATLAB, and I'm going to show you how to do it and then how to specify some of the different features of the bar graph. Okay? So let's go back to our data set. Um, this is the Abalone data set. And we have some 4,000 individuals. And um, they are each contained. Each, for each individual, we have some physical measurements, their age, and as well as a nominal gender, as given to us by the original researchers who collected this data set. And so perhaps one thing we'd like to do is, well, how many, how many males, females, and infantile samples are there? Are there roughly equal numbers? Or are there a lot more of one type than the other? Right? This is a very sensible question we might be asking if this is just the data set we're handed. So we're going to uh, learn how to get that information in a nice way, quickly, as well as plot it in the bar graph. Okay? So let's go back to our data set. And uh, here is the data set as before. I've already loaded up the um, data up top, so we don't have to do that again. And what we're going to do is um, first collect the data that we would like to visualize. Right? We'd like to have three numbers, which is number of males, number of females, and number of infants in this particular data set. So what we're going to do uh, is then we want this to end up being a vector of numbers. We want three numbers and a vector. Okay? Um, and so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to enumerate a list of possible genders as it's either an M or an F or an I. Here's all of the ones you could possibly be. So then I'm going to make a counts vector that's going, I'm going to initialize with zeros, right? And it's going to be a 3 by 1 vector, where each element corresponds to the number of counts of that possible gender in the data set. So I'm going to make a for loop for ci equals 1, 2, uh, 3, right? We're going to populate counts with the number of individuals that correspond to that particular gender in our data set. So let's say, uh, and here, um, and before, the way that we found the males, females, was by using the find command. Um, and that works really well if you actually want the indices of the individuals that are female or male. But in this particular case, all we want to know is how many there actually are, right? So there's a shortcut for doing this kind of command, which is pretty handy because uh, it saves you from having to actually find the indices and then count how many indices there are, right? What we're going to do is write a conditional statement, okay? And the conditional statement is the following. If you look at the entire gender vector, does each element equal to one of the possible genders. I'm going to make that CI, OK? So possible genders 1 is the letter M, 2 is the letter F, and 3 is the letter I, OK? So I'm asking the question, does that particular, el does every single element of gender equal one of those letters? So the re that's going to return a long vector, the same size as gender, that's going to be full of zeros and ones. Zero when the answer was no, and, yeah, and one for the, when the letter is yes. OK? So to count the number of possible um, of, of individuals that were labeled as being m, all we have to do is find the sum of that vector, right? Because we're asking the question, does it equal to m? Every time it equals to m, we get a 1. Otherwise, we get a 0. So the number of m's is just the sum of that vector. So this is a nice shortcut. And uh, all we have to do is take the sum of that vector, OK? And if we do this, then uh, we will end up with a uh, vector of three numbers called counts that contains this information. So I've just run that code. And if we go back to the command line, OK, and look at the number of counts, here is what's inside counts. So here are the three elements of counts that correspond to number of m's, number of f's, and number of i's in my data set. OK? So that's great. Um, but let's say that we wanted to visualize this information with a graph of some kind. 
um, the most sensible thing to do and the easiest thing to do is probably just make this into a bar graph. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is make a figure. And the bar graph, not surprisingly, uh, is the function called bar. We can do a bar of counts, which gives us this bar graph. Now, at this point, it is not a particularly fancy bar graph. Okay, it has all the default settings. It has all the default colors. Now, and as you know from reading the documentation earlier for the plot function, almost everything about this particular graph can be customized. Okay, if I want it to be filled with a special color, I can do that. If I want the outline to be a different color, I can do that. I can add hash lines, and uh, I can add stuff on top of it. I can plot this on top of something else. I can put something else on top of this. All of these things are possible. Okay, but I'm going to show you something that's kind of useful in the particular case, which is that I just want to label my bar plot. Okay, you guys can figure out how to change the colors and make it look prettier later. So, specifically, what we're going to do is. The vertical axis is number of individuals. We can label it that. But right now, the horizontal axis is 1, 2, and 3, okay? that, which doesn't really make any sense. Those really should be labeled M, F, and I. Okay? So let's, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay? So inside the plot, um, there is a, uh, there's a, there a property of the axes known as x ticks. Okay? So what we're going to do, let me just show you again. So Ticks refers to the position of any place where there is actually quanti quantity label on each of the axes. So in this case, there is a tick at 1, and at 2, and at 3. And the tick labels appear as the number 1, the number 2, and the number 3. That's the default behavior. Okay. So what we need to do is get access to that tick label, x tick label property, and, uh, and set it to be something else. Okay. So in order to get a handle on that particular x tick property, and there are many, many, many of them. I'm just going to show you one of them and how to change it. Okay? Um, we can, uh, first of all, we need a handle on the actual object of the axes. Okay? Um, and the shortcut for getting the axes, uh, there's a shortcut in here um, that I'm just going to tell you once. Uh, it's pretty useful is the GCA command, okay? which um, gives you the handle of the current axes. So I'm going to label this the axis handle equals the GCA, which gives me the current axis. Okay? And what you can do is after I run this code, okay, AH equals whatever the current handle axis is. Okay? So there's a handle to the leaded axis. Okay? Now what we can do uh, is change a, all the properties of AH um, here by looking at it. Okay, here's all the properties. Here's axes with all the properties, right? And there's a lot of properties. You can click on that button right there that says all properties to make it show you all the properties, right? So what we can do is we say ah dot x ticks. I think this one's capitalized. Uh, x tick. Okay, there we go. So that gives me the position of the ticks, which is one, two, and three. And I can also get x tick label, which are the characters 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so that gives you a clue how to change it. So what we're going to do is get rid of this, and we're going to go back to our function and change the ax equals x tick label function. And instead of the characters 1, 2, and 3, which is what appears on the label of the horizontal axis, I'm going to make it m f and i. So this is a collection of uh, characters that's going to show up in the x-axis. So I'll show you what that does. Here we go. We've done it. Okay. So we haven't changed the locations of the axes, but what we've changed is how they appear. Right? So now instead of being labeled 1, 2, and 3, I have the x labels as m, f, and i. Okay? And uh, if we wanted to, we can also give this thing a y label, which is number of individuals. Okay? And that's it. That is how you do a bar graph.